right, guys, we got a lot to talk about here, including waiver wire week six, some latest news and notes, including the push of Devontae Adams on a cameraman. Yes, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Some news and notes there. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the Kinsheepses and how they're really starting to promote waiver wire week six pickup. Kenneth Walker, and I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you're here to expect me to talk about Kenneth Walker and picking him up, you're on the wrong channel because I told you to draft him ahead of Penny. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and how everyone is jumping on the Kenneth Walker train and how to identify the Kinsheepsis, right? It's a big episode here, guys. I know it's short and sweet and we're talking waiver wire, but this it's jam-packed with my opinion on some of the stuff that happened in NFL Week 5. So Week 6 is the focus here. Waiver wire. I'm going to give you guys some options. But the main focus is talking about some of these issues and some of these uh, the, the news that's coming out right now with the Penny uh, injury, the Kenneth Walker, the Alex Pierce, the Devontae Adams push. Deep dive right here, right now. Exciting episode, so buckle up. Before I get in this show, guys, very important, guys, write this code down. The code is FFC20. Every time you're hungry, every time you're going to watch a game, Monday night, Thursday night, Sunday night, UFC, doesn't matter. Write the code FFC and head on over to Hooters.com or download the app. The code you want to use, guys, upon checkout is FFC to save $10 on order of 30 or more on takeout or delivery, guys. All right? This is in select states across America. That's Hooters.com. Download the app. The code is FFC20 to save. Now, this is the food that I like during games. Try the wings. Try the nachos. Amazing food, guys. Head on over right now to Hooters.com. Download the app. Use that code FFC20 to save. All right, guys? Now, before I get into the show, also, guys, enhance that game watching experience, mybookie.ag. That's the site I use. Use code FFC to double your first deposit. Enhance that game watching experience. Again, that's mybookie.ag. The code is FFC. And again, when I'm sitting around watching games, I like to enhance my game watching experience. Sometimes watching the game without fantasy or without my bookie, it's it's just not that exciting. So that's the site I use. Head on over there right now, guys. The FFC is the code. You will like the site. That's the site that I like. All right, guys. Now let's dive into waiver wire week six. Before I do, there is some news. Let's talk about this. Let's, let's dive and then I'll get to some names here. But when we're talking about waiver wire week six, I think it's ridiculous to talk about it because everybody that they're suggesting, you've already got on your team. If you're thinking of Kenneth Walker, you drafted Kenneth Walker. <laughs> you, you know, if you listen to this channel, you got 60 rounds, you're light years ahead of the competition. Now, everybody's talking about Kenneth Walker. Let, let's just talk about that right now. Because when I look at the headlines, I simply look at fantasy football, I'm on YouTube. All I see is Kenneth Walker's picture. It's like now you're realizing this. You didn't, you didn't realize that Penny was going to get hurt. I knew that Penny was going to get hurt. I knew that either he was going to get hurt or he's just not good. The guy had like five touchdowns in three seasons rushing. If he was that good, he would have started years ago. They would have never acquired Kenneth Walker, right? Like you got to see things before they happen. I saw this. I drafted Kenneth Walker in the fifth round in the league even before Chris Carson was out because I knew Kenneth Walker's second round draft capital is going to be used and that Penny sucks. This is This was obvious. This was obvious that Penny wasn't going to finish the season. Well, you say, well, Joe, he got hurt. That doesn't count. It does count. That's what I projected for. Now, everybody's riding his D. Everybody. Everybody. I say, you know, this guy's a league winner. You should draft him. He was a second-round draft capital. This is something that should have been talked about before you advise people to draft Penny, who has shown us historically he can't finish a season. So I encourage you guys, if you guys ever see anybody, every, okay, if you see anyone talking about Kenneth Walker, if you see a thumbnail with Kenneth Walker, that's how you identify the Kinsheepsis. That's the quickest way to identify the Kinsheepsis. If you're on Instagram, if you're on TikTok, tag me on these posts. I'd love to hear about it. Just, just tag me, say Kinsheepsis. Let them know that they should have told you to draft Kenneth Walker like the counselor did. Let them know and tag me on it, at Fantasy Football Counselor. I want to I wanna see. I want to see what they're talking about. I'm curious because now they're all riding the train. So anyway, anyone telling you Kenneth Walker now is a sheep. Anyone telling you Alec Pierce, like, oh, he's Matt Ryan's favorite target. He's, he's, he's building trust with Matt Ryan. That's so obvious. He was a second-round pick, one of the best pure deep-passing receivers, deep-threat receivers out of this NFL class. I told you to stash Alec Pierce, who was sitting 101 on the consensus on the Sheep rankings. I told you to pick up Alec Pierce on all rosters. Matt Ryan throws a lot. Michael Pittman is not a proven true wide receiver one. 
and Pierce has got the speed and Paris Campbell sucks. This is stuff that I talk about on this channel. So if you are new to the channel, if you want to be light years out of the competition, if you don't want to get news and waiver wire advice six weeks later, this is the channel to listen to. Okay, guys, I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this because it's so obvious that Alec Pierce was going to break out. Like, how do you not see that he's sliding in the depth chart as the wide receiver too? So if you are the Kinsheeps and you're watching this, maybe you'll learn something. So you know next time, because you can't beat the counselor. I'm always light years ahead of you, all right? So again, if Kenneth Walker and Pierce are available in your league, if you're listening to this channel, you already have them. But if you're a new person and you, and you want to grab them and they're available in your league, first of all, you're in a sheep league. You know, everybody should have these guys on the roster. If they're available, grab them, obviously. I mean, it goes without saying, all right? Um, other news here I guys, want, I want to talk about here is the push with Devontae Adams. I got to talk about this before I get to a list of some uh, waiver wire pickups. But again, at, at this point in the game for waiver wire, you should be set. Your team should be solidified. Other than grabbing and streaming a kicker or defense, if you drafted with 16-round draft session, you be, should be solid. So waiver wire at week six is pretty much a waste of time. Really, unless you need, a, you know, your team should be solid. You shouldn't be, like, relying on Eno Benjamin in week six to save your team. You should have tons of RB depth. My RB depth looks like this. Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, Damian Pierce, Brees Hall, Tyler Algier. That's my team. I'm 4-1 and one right now. I don't know what to tell you, right? It pisses me off because everybody is now jumping on the Kenneth Walker train after I've been talking about him since April, since he got drafted. So, Devontae Adams pushes a reporter. I want to talk about this because this is very, very important when you look at, you know, the landscape of what's going on in the NFL and everything. So if hypothetically a fan jumps out and pushes Devontae Adams, in the comments below, let me know what would happen to that fan. I, I really want to know, okay? I want to know what would happen to a fan if they jumped out or even if they were standing there, Adams walked by, and they just shoved him. They didn't have to push They didn't have to send him flying like Adams sent the, the, the reporter flying. If a, if a fan or a reporter or a cameraman, for this matter, pushed Devontae Adams, just shoved him, just pushed him, what would happen to that reporter? I would assume the security would have picked him up. He would have been in handcuffs and would have been definitely charged and arrested. Even a light push. Adams shoved this guy and sent the cameraman flying. It was like a, almost like a sucker punch because the cameraman wasn't expecting it. Cameraman, defenseless, right? I don't care if you're in a bad mood because you lost your game. I don't care. You don't shove a you don't shove a camera a defenseless cameraman three yards because you're angry because Derek Carr sucks, which I told you Derek Carr would suck. Compar comparing him to a Hall of Famer, comparing him to future Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers, okay? I told you Derek Carr sucks. Derek Carr should have never been paid again to extend a contract because he can't win. And I and he's got all the weapons, but that's on a side tangent. We know Derek Carr sucks now. I mean, people, I keep saying this. This is the same conversation we had when Carson Wentz got paid $128 million and I said he sucked, and people are like, you're nuts, Joe. Carson Wentz is the best. No, he's not the best. He sucks. So my reaction to Devontae Adams shoving the, the cameraman, he should be charged, he should be arrested, he should be fined, and he should be suspended. Let me repeat this again. He should be charged, he should be arrested, he should be fined, and he should be suspended. This is without a doubt. This is what should happen to Devontae Adams. Why? Because athletes are not above the law. Athletes are not better than regular civilians. And athletes don't get any special privileges when they assault people. Okay, that's the bottom line. We see this all the time. People getting away with pushing people, shoving people, throwing people around because they've got money and fame. That's okay. I don't think that's okay. I don't agree with it. Devontae Adams should have all those things attached to him. Now, if I was a cameraman, I would definitely be charging, severely charging Devontae Adams with a criminal lawsuit because, again, if a fan did it, pushed Devontae Adams, they would be charged. They would be criminals. They would be, you know, sent to jail, right? So, again, that's my opinion on this. You guys can comment below. You got to look at it from the fan's perspective or the cameraman's perspective, right? So, that's my thoughts. Nobody's above the law. I don't care if you're an athlete or not. Now, waiver wire. Again, I'm going to give you guys a couple names, but at this point, your team should be solidified. P.J. Walker, if you're desperate for a quarterback. Geno Smith, if he's available. P.J. Walker starting. High ankle sprain probably for Baker Mayfield. Ido Benjamin. James Conner, rib injury. I mean, this is what I told you, James Conner. He's shown a history of injuries coming off a pinnacle touchdown season. I told you, James Conner. Everyone had James Conner ahead of Brees Hall, ahead of 
Damian Pierce. It's crazy. It's cra- it's all com- it's all unfolding right now, guys. Like, as I said, so Eno Benjamin, George Pickens seem to be a prime target for Kenny Pickett, letting catches and receiving yards. Again, not as targeted as much so much as the other guys, but starting to pick up with Kenny Pickett. They did have a tough matchup versus Buffalo. George Pickens, I don't think he's available, but if he is, grab him. Jacoby Myers finished eighth in fantasy points. Grab him. Seems to be a primary consistent target. Uh, D- uh, D- Dayami Brown, a new name here, relatively new name. Four targets, two receptions, two touchdowns on wa- Washington's receiver. I mean, I'm not expecting that every week. If you're desperate for a wide receiver, could be some upside there. But again, very touchdown dependent, very pinnacle week. Like I said, Geno Smith, Hayden Hurst if he's available. And that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, if Brian Robinson's there, right, Mike Boone if he's still available, um, you know, Jalen Warren, Pittsburgh, you know, Harris looked a little bit lost. You know, I take ownership on that. Harris looking really weird this year. Jalen Warren looking good on a couple runs here. Uh, You know, Jarek McKinnon, KC, you know, I don't know, man. I don't trust him, but people are grabbing him. I really don't trust him. Years to wow, we're not wowed. James Cook, you know, I think he ended up, what did he get, a touchdown this week? I don't know, man. I, again, too many, too much volume, too many opportunities, I mean, too many targets there at Buffalo. I don't trust him. Pierre Strong, if Damian Harris is out for, for weeks or more, Strong could be next in line. Pierre Strong, uh, you know, Tevin Coleman, Joshua Kelly, Dontrell Hilliard. Again, Dontrell Hilliard get a touchdown, stole, stole away from Henry. I still don't trust him. So those are some names for you guys. But at this point in the game, if you're re- relying on Dontrell Hilliard or Tevin Coleman to save you from your league, you've got some issues, like serious issues. All right? So, again, I had to get I had to vent that out here with Kenneth Walker because he's not a waiver wire week six pickup. He was a top five, round five draft pick. It was a second round pick in reality, but should have been a top five round five draft pick as part of a robust RB strategy as I advised because I knew Penny would go down. All right, guys. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. Head on over to Hooters.com, FFC20. Go get yourself some wings. I had to vent that. But again, I'm out here speaking facts. All right. Subscribe. Thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you think of Devontae Adams. And um, hopefully let me know if you got Kenneth Walker. You should have him if you listen to this channel. Subscribe. Thumbs up. I'm out.